Hi everyone, welcome back to Dentist Zen. Today we are here with a new video on surface structures of enamel. Enamel which is the outermost layer of the tooth and yes, it is made up of enamel rods. And what is present inside the enamel rods? We have hydroxyapatite crystals. Now, if we look at the surface of this enamel, this part of the enamel directly under the microscope, then what all structures we can see comes under the surface structure of enamel, structures of enamel. So this can come as a short note for you or it can be part of your long question when you are asked about the structure of enamel in detail where you have to talk about all these microscopic structures we have already discussed for seven in the previous videos you can check those videos in today's video we'll talk about the surface structures of enamel in detail so let's begin before we start don't forget to subscribe to dental zen so that you keep getting such easy quick and informative videos on all the dental topics also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new videos now here we have to talk about four surface structures first thing we said that enamel is made up of rods inter rod rod inter rod but when it comes to surface of the enamel picture is little different here we cannot see any rods or prisms so this layer of enamel on the surface is rodless or prismless so there are no prisms and this is the first surface structure that is prismless enamel second is perichymata now what are these lines we said that enamel is deposited in increments or parts and the lines which separate these increments are known as the incremental lines of enamel as we can see here so these incremental lines of enamel where they touch the surface of the enamel here they form a line on the surface which is known as perichymata so this is the second surface structure now third is enamel rod ends that is where these rods end on the surface there they form a concave cavity like this so these concave areas seen on the surface of the enamel is the third surface structure that is rod ends fourth is cracks yes you heard the word crack like we say there is a crack in the wall similarly there can be cracks on the surface of the enamel now what are these cracks these cracks are actually part of something which lies within the enamel so a structure which is present inside the enamel known as enamel lamellae so their outer edges their outer parts on the surface of the enamel are known as cracks so those are the four structures surface structures prismless enamel perichymata rod ends and cracks let's discuss each of them in detail first is prismless enamel first we'll understand how this prismless enamel forms on the surface in the video on amelogenesis we discussed when enamel formation takes place by the cell ameloblast it happens from its distal end which is known as tom's process so initially this tom's process looks like this and it directly deposits enamel so first layer is rodless or structureless enamel then later this tom's process develops a distal extension one more projection so now the enamel formation occurs from two areas so because of which we can see rod enamel and interrod enamel so bulk of the enamel is formed like that rod interrod rod interrod after that when the final layer of enamel has to be deposited this distal part of tom's process is lost so what is left is again only one part and again the enamel which is formed will be rodless so we will see that rodless enamel then rod interrod enamel and finally again the surface enamel will be rodless or prismless in which crystals are directly deposited there are no rods or no prism so that is how prismless enamel forms on the surface of the enamel now let's see its features now prismless also called as a prismatic a means without prisms now very important thing that you have to remember about this structureless layer is the thickness yes it is 30 micrometers thick and that can be your entrance question you may be asked directly the thickness of prismless enamel is and your choices which may be given 25 micrometers 50 micrometers 75 micrometers and 100 so which one will you choose it is 25 because it is closest to what we know that it is 30 micrometers thick so remember that second is it is seen 70 percent of the permanent teeth but all of the deciduous teeth now this prismless enamel is least often seen on the cusp tip so here it is less common so but where it is common it is most common towards the cervical area so here in the cervical areas this structureless layer is more commonly seen now 
because there are no rods or no prisms in this layer so we cannot see any outlines of prisms here so what do we see we see apatite crystals which are parallel to one another so crystals here are arranged like this they are parallel to one another but if we see their relationship to incremental lines of the enamel then these crystals are perpendicular to these lines as you can see this is incremental line and the crystals are perpendicular to these lines also these this prismless enamel which is the surface layer is more mineralized heavily mineralized than the bulk of the enamel beneath it than the enamel which is present below it so it is more mineralized than that so those are the features of prismless enamel second is perichymeta now we said that incremental lines of enamel are seen like this and where they touch the surface there we see perichymeta so perichymeta are external that is outer manifestations or parts of the stri of radius or incremental lines so let's see how do they appear on the surface so these lines on the surface looks like this what is this appearance this appearance is called transverse that means horizontal wave like wave like grooves grooves means depressions as you can see here so these are the perichymeta now if we extend these lines all over the surface of the tooth like this around the tooth so what we see they can appear something like this as you can see in the picture we can see so many lines now these lines are continuous around the tooth like this as we can see here and they are parallel to each other so they are parallel to each other and also parallel to cemento enamel junction so this is cementum this is enamel and this is cemento enamel junction so these lines are parallel to cemento enamel junction as well now they run circumferentially that means around the whole circumference of the tooth as horizontal lines now these lines are more in number at cemento enamel junction they are about 30 perichymeta per millimeter of the surface but when it comes to occlusal areas or incisal areas what do you think the number of these lines decreases that is 10 to 10 perichymeta per millimeter of the surface in the occlusal areas now these lines fairly they are regular that means they wave like regular course but when it comes to cervical region they become irregular as you can see here their course may become irregular so that is perichymeta now let's see how do we give the terminology now perichymeta we are saying that re they refer to the grooves where the stri of radius or incremental lines intersect with the surface intersect means where they meet the surface so these are our incremental lines as you can see in the picture so these are the incremental lines so where they meet on the surface here there is a groove groove is also known as furrow so what is this groove or furrow this is a depressed area so this is a depression so the, these depressions we are calling perichymeta they appear as lines so here you get your another viva question what is other name for perichymeta they are known as imbrication lines lines of pickerel so that can be your viva question other name for perichymeta is imbrication lines of pickerel now we here we can see some depressions that is grooves and furrows but also we can see some elevations in between these depressions that means some raised areas are there so these raised areas are known as ridges or crests ridges or crests so these are elevations so now perichymeta or incremental line can be used as a term for both elevations as well as for depressions so we can say both terms are used for both ridges which are elevations as well as for depressions now so to avoid confusion we should suffix the term perichymeta or incremental line by a word that means after writing perichymeta or incremental line we should write a word like it should be ridge or crest if we want to talk about elevations it should be groove or furrow if we want to talk about depressions for example we will write perichymeta ridge that means i am talking about the elevations if i write perichymeta groove then it means i am talking about the depression so that is how terminology goes now these lines they are absent in the occlusal parts of the deciduous teeth so where are they seen they are seen in the cervical parts which are postnatal cervical parts post means after natal means birth so of the cervical enamel develops after the birth so here because of the change in the environment we can see incremental lines and that is why we can see perichymeta in the postnatal cervical parts of these teeth now coming to the third structure rod ends rods where they end on the surface of the enamel there they form a concavity so these rod ends are concave but their depth may vary that is they may be shallow 
that is less deep in the cervical areas whereas they are deepest near the incisal or occlusal area so here they are deepest now surface of the enamel if we see ultra structurally that is under electron microscope it is very very uneven it is not smooth we can see many structures so let's see what things we can see first we can see pits pits are depressions which are about 1 to 1.5 micrometer diameter so what actually they represent they represent the ends of ameloblast enamel is formed by ameloblast cells so their end where li it lies there forms a pit so this is pit now second thing we can see is elevation over the surface of enamel these are known as enamel caps if they are about 10 to 15 micrometer thick that is small elevations then they are known as enamel caps now how these enamel caps are formed now if there is any debris some substance over the surface of the enamel which cannot be mineralized which is non-mineralized and over which enamel gets deposited then it forms that elevation which is known as enamel cap now if these elevations are larger then they are known as enamel brocks so they are about 30 to 50 micrometer and they are larger enamel elevations so these are the three things which you can see on the surface of enamel ultra structurally pits enamel caps and enamel brocks now we come to the the last structure surface structure cracks originally it was thought that they are actually narrow fissure like structures narrow long structures but now we it has been demonstrated they are nothing but the outer parts of a structure inside the enamel the, which are known as lamellae so these are lamellae and their outer part this part is known as cracks now they can be seen as jagged lines as we can see here in the picture they appear as jagged lines on the various regions of the tooth surface like this now these lines are different from perichymata which are actually appearing as wave like grooves as we discussed so these are cracks and these are perichymata now these lines are less than a millimeter in length these cracks are less than a millimeter in length so they can be but few some of them can be longer and few of them can reach the occlusal or the incisal edge so that is how the cracks can be now they are fairly evenly spaced that is at regular intervals now the lamellae which are longer which are longer inside the enamel they appear more thicker than the ones which are short so that is if with time these perichymata will disappear with wearing away of the tooth with mastication with the use of tooth this perichymata on the surface will be gone and what is left is enamel cracks so we see enamel cracks now we come to the summary of these surface structures so first is prismless enamel it is also known as a prismatic enamel so it is a structureless layer and it is 30 micrometers thick second is perichymata these are also known as imbrication lines of pigrel what are they they are external manifestations of stri of radius and they appear as transverse wave like grooves now third is rod ends how do they appear they appear as concave there can be three things on the surface pits enamel caps enamel brocks finally the fourth is cracks now what are these these are outer edges of lamellae so that is the summary of surface structures of enamel yes, let's check what have you learned name four surface structures of enamel what is a prismatic or prismless enamel and what is its thickness what are perichymata how do they appear what is the number of perichymata in occlusal region and in cervical region what are rod ends pits enamel caps brocks and what are enamel cracks so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share the video with your friends keep learning keep watching and keep smiling good luck for your exams see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye